In this video, we look at um, a new coordinate system called cylindrical coordinates. Uh, we can see the formulas um, here. Uh, their cylindrical coordinates is very similar to polar coordinates. Um, so we can see that x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, and the z is equal to z. So we have three cylindrical coordinates, r, theta, and z. These are your cylindrical coordinates. And to get a geometric interpretation of each of those variables and to get a familiarity with the cylindrical coordinates transformation, which is r cosine theta, r sine theta, z. Okay, so here's the cylindrical coordinates transformation. We can see the interpretation of each of the variables r, theta, and z that r is changing the radius of the solid cylinder that we're looking at. Okay, we can see that theta is an angle variable. Theta is changing the angle and the angle of the wedge. And we can see that this angle is happening in the xy plane. Theta is being measured from the positive x-axis. And as theta increases, like in polar coordinates, theta swings around in the counterclockwise direction. Okay. So what we have is cylindrical coordinates being polar coordinates, right? The radius changes of this circle, so to speak. The only thing that makes cylindrical coordinates different now is that we have a third variable, which is the height of this solid cylindrical tube, okay? If you want to uh, pick a specific value of r, so say like r is equal to 2, for example, then the transformation would be r is equal to 2, and now that there are only two parameters, theta and z, to move, so r would be equal to 2, 2 cosine theta, 2 sine theta, and z, and now we can see that with those only those two variables, the radius has been fixed. So now we are at a cylinder of a certain radius and of a specific radius two. And as theta, the other two variables are the only thing that can change, theta changes and z changes, right? And now we have just part of the outside of a cylinder, of a, so just a cylindrical shell. Okay. If the radius is now all three variables are allowed to move again, right? We're going to have a solid cylindrical region. Okay, and let's let theta get bigger and bigger. Okay, so here's what we have: if we fix the value of z, right? Now we make z being equal to some constant, like in this case, z is equal to two the transform would be r and theta are the only variables allowed to move z is equal to 2 and we'll get r cosine theta r sine theta 2 okay and we can see that because z is fixed z is now a constant and it's only the two variables r and theta that are allowed to move and so what we have here is a disk a solid disk but is in a particular plane z equal to whatever that constant is. Okay. The last variable would be the theta variable holding that constant. So let's let all the variables move again. And we have a cylinder okay, of only height uh, 0.66 in this case. So if z gets bigger. What happens if we pick a single value of theta? right we can see that theta is now fixed right as theta changes we can have uh, something happening in a different plane z and r are the only variables that change we can see z changing here to be the up and down part of this plane and how long that plane extends is controlled by the radius r so it's as if we are taking a slice of that cylinder 
a vertical slice of the cylinder. Okay, and that creates a plane in every slice. Okay. So that those are the cylindrical coordinates explained a little bit in their interpretations. And the only trick um, now is to put these cylindrical coordinates into use in evaluating a um, volume integral or a triple type integral over a certain defined region. Okay, and just to do a quick problem there, just to see where this is going to lead to, here we have a triple integral, and they want us to convert it to cylindrical coordinates. So part of this problem is to kind of get an idea of what region, 3D region, we are integrating over. We can see that we're integrating z going from 0 up to some plane up to z bigger than 0, but z less than x. Um, x is going from 0, bigger than 0, but less than the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is a telltale sign that we have part of a circle. And y is going from negative 1, um, bigger than negative 1, but also less than 1. Okay, So we can see here that if we convert this integral to cylindrical coordinates, there are two things that have to be done. First, we have to change the function of x, y, and z, okay? And we need to convert that to a function of r, theta, and z. And the way that is done is by taking the original equation, and wherever you see x, put in r cosine theta. Wherever you see the y, put in r sine theta. This is the cylindrical coordinates transformation. And wherever you see z, put in z. So the first thing to do is that this function we're going to be integrating is r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared. That's the function evaluated at x, y, and z given by cylindrical coordinates. And that turns into r squared. So the function we're going to be integrating is r squared. Um, we have a um, fudge factor given by the determinant of the Jacobian of the transformation. And the determinant of the Jacobian of the transformation, just like it was for polar coordinates, is equal to r. So we'll put r d something, d something, d something, and we need to figure out the order we want to integrate in in terms of cylindrical coordinates. It could be d r d z d theta. It could be d theta d r d z. Right? Typically, we, the best order is d z d r d theta. This is usually the most obvious and common. And we can see that because z is one of the new cylindrical coordinates, um, we just need to integrate from 0 up to x like we always did. Okay, so that's the z integral done. And now we need the r and the theta. And for that, we need to figure out from the original limits of integration what the region looked like in the xy plane. Well, since x was bigger than 0 but less than positive square root of 1 minus y squared, that was the right side of the circle. And then y goes from negative 1 to 1. So this was our region of integration. So we can see here that r, the radius, is getting circles bigger and bigger. Radius is going to go from 0 to 1. And theta, the angle measured, uh, remember theta is this angle measured from the positive x-axis. Theta is going to go from negative pi over 2. 2 theta is equal to pi over 2. So this integral converted into cylindrical coordinates is going to be r cubed dz dr d theta, z going from 0 up to x, um, r going from 0 to r is equal to 1, and theta going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay. So that is how cylindrical coordinates gets used in a problem. 
and the interpretation of each of the cylindrical coordinates as radi radius, angle, and height of that cylinder. And so varying choices of z, r, and theta will create a certain region in the xyz space.